Well, good morning and a very happy Easter. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'm very used to asking congregations to say that loudly. So I'm really hoping that you bellow that at home. Well, today, welcome to our Easter service. And at this stage, I just want to say an enormous thank you to all those who played a part in today's service. You joining in with this is massively appreciated, so thank you. If you are watching this live, please do join us for coffee, a virtual coffee via Zoom in the octagon afterwards. The details of how you might join in with that are at the end of the service. Now, I'm going to ask uh, the children if they might look out for something. It's hiding. Here it is. Now, can you see how many of those you can find in today's service? Do you count them and then email the church office at the end and let us know how many you have found our virtual Easter egg hunt. And today I would like to start with our collect. So at the start of our service, let's pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Easter for me is a reminder of renewal, hope and new beginnings following suffering and sadness. Easter to me reinforces the reality that God loves us so much because he gave all for his children. And to me, that means we have to love others as God loves us. I like Easter because it's a time to spend with your family. Happy Easter, everyone. The hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Like most of us, I've been thinking a lot about this virus, about how infectious it is, hence all the social distancing, and also about how indiscriminate it seems at first, but then isn't really when you think about it. On the one hand, even the Prime Minister's got it, but on the other, it's clear that the most vulnerable and undervalued in our society are suffering disproportionately, just like they always seem to do. But this Easter, I'm reminded that the love represented by the cross is more infectious and indiscriminate than any virus. You can pass it on from hundreds or even thousands of miles away, and literally anyone, and indeed everyone, can get it. Rich or poor, powerful or powerless, innocent or guilty. This virus will be overcome, but that love will last forever. The reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. About daybreak, on the first day of the week, when the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary came to look at the grave. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat down on it. His face shone like lightning, his garments were white as snow. At the sight of him, the guard shook with fear and fell to the ground as though dead. The angel spoke to the women, you, he said, have nothing to fear. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised as he said he would be. Come and see the place where he was laid, and then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. That is what I came to tell you. They hurried away from the tomb in awe and great joy and ran to bring the news to the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus was there in their path, greeting them. They came up and clasped his feet, kneeling before him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. Go and take word to my brothers that they are to leave for Galilee. They will see me there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Easter, it's the hope in your gut. It's the one thing that makes everything all right. The events of the first Easter guide us today, give us hope for the future, for there will be a tomorrow in which we will have a part to play. I love Easter because of the lovely flowers and, and I love playing with ladybirds and I love the chocolate sweets and how it looks it's really good. Firstly let me say thank you ever so much for all your love and prayers for me and the family uh, whilst I've been ill a couple of weeks ago now. It's great to be back and uh, I'm really grateful for all the prayers and kind thoughts that people have been sending uh, in this difficult time. However, today we're here celebrating Easter Day, one of the most pivotal and important parts of the, East, the Christian calendar. And what a day to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It, for, for my mind, it's been something that's really important over these years and I've been mulling it each year. And there's a kind of a theme that emerges each year and I've begun to develop, delve into it a bit more year by year. 
and that's to do with thinking about Easter at its heart celebrate something quite profound and amazing which is to do with recognizing that Easter does for us what we can't do for ourselves what we're celebrating at Easter is something that what God does for us that we can't do for ourselves I've been amazed uh, listening to the news and hearing about all the remarkable stories to do with the efforts of humanity around the globe at this difficult and uh, changing time of drawing together with resources and providing hope and care in extraordinary ways. The amount of selflessness that's gone on with people giving of themselves and their time and their skills in order to help others has been breathtaking and amazing. And that's fantastic and it's to celebrate as well. But Easter invites us to take a step further back from that and acknowledge that there are things that we can't do for ourselves that we celebrate at this Easter time. For me, these things are encapsulated in this idea that when Jesus rose from the dead, what he did was defeat the power of sin and death. Now I think there's these two big themes that dog humanity that kind of weigh us down and bog us down in a way which we can't get out of ourselves, not by any of our own human effort, not even by our collective effort, but it's God's work that does this and only God's work. <clears throat> and these two things that kind of weigh us down are, in a way, we can think of it in terms of these things that Jesus defeated, the power of sin and the power of death. And they're like the kind of bookends of our human existence. Sin has to do with the past and our worry about the past. Sin has to do with being locked into our past in a way which we can't undo what has been done. Sin is about things that we've done that we can't undo and it's about things that have been done to us that we can't undo. Things perhaps that have left deep scars and big hurts that have changed our lives in ways that we've not wanted. Sin has to do with the marring of the beauty of God in creation and we can't undo that on our own. And yet God's gift in Christ in defeating the power of sin means that we can retell the story differently. We can find a way of feeling liberated from the past rather than locked into it. Jesus defeating the power of death is like the other bookend at the end of our life and it's to do with the fear of the future. None of us know what the future holds, but we all know that we all end up dying one day. The power of defeat of sin and death being defeated reminds us that death is not a wall, rather than a doorway through which we all pass one day. Jesus defeating the power of death means that we don't need to fear the future. Yes, death comes to us all, and of course with that, the sadness, the sorrow, the upset, the sense of loss and isolation that comes to. And yet alongside all that, Jesus defeating the power of death means that we needn't fear the future, because beyond isolation is companionship again. Beyond that sense of fearing separation is the invitation to continuing companionship with God's gift of life that begins now and journeys with us through death's doorway to life with him in the future. God in Jesus has defeated the power of the past through sin, defeats the worry about the future in defeating the power of death. And that's why we, at this important day in the church's year, celebrate this fantastic gift of Easter Day, this great way of acknowledging God's gift to us of life beyond death and of being unlocked from our past by forgiveness. God's ability to work in us and give us his gift of forgiveness transfers out from us to others and makes life new and meaningful in new ways. So may Easter be for you a time of joy and celebration. May it be a means of knowing God's grace in retelling your story of life and giving you purpose and hope for the future for you and your families today. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. is a time when the earthly life of our Lord Jesus Christ was given up freely so that all of our humankind could have their sins forgiven.
Hello, um, Easter for me, which is we are reflecting Jesus Christ experience、um, during this lockdown, and we are together fighting for the coronavirus. So we have to turn away from sin and be optimism and manage our healthy and well-being. And see you again in the church. Bye. We come now to our time of prayer. Many of you will know this place. It's a long and deep wooded ditch hidden away behind St Albans suburban homes, and it dates from Roman times, two thousand years ago, built by Celtic Brits in the first century AD, at a time when Jesus was walking the earth. And I invite you to come with me as we walk in the footsteps of two thousand years of St Albans people. Two millennia of countless generations coming and going through times of happiness and sadness, of war and peace, of illness and of health. So let's bring our own concerns to God in this our time of strangeness, fear, and uncertainty. Some of these prayers use words from the Corrie Mila community in the north of Ireland. Resurrected God, on this newest first day of creation, your people gather in creative ways to bear the image of God together. As we worship and worry, as we praise and pray, let us pause and acknowledge all that has happened in recent weeks. And as we bring our fears and release our tears. Let us see more clearly that the world you have made is still good. Let us pray for that world, God of all people. How odd that it takes a global disease to show us that we are all one, one species, one family, one people dependent on you. When we bring our world before you, its leaders. Its key workers, its young and its old, its powerful and its vulnerable. For those with power and wealth, we pray for integrity, compassion, generosity. For those who care and heal, we thank you for their hands, their skills, their selflessness, and we pray for protection, for energy, for hope. We pray for our community in St Albans, for the hospital, the GP surgeries, the pharmacies, the supermarkets, and the residential care homes. For its now empty schools and pubs and theatres and offices, and for those who would normally work and live and play there. God of the One and God of the Whole. Be with those who are working from home this week, and those whose work keeps them from home. Be with those who won't go beyond the front porch, and those who stay on the front line. Be with those who must choose between doing a job they know they can do, and being the parent only they can be. May we each, in our private worry, hear your universal call to come. Lay down heavy burdens and find a welcome rest, and then, with our burdens lightened, may we help to hold the whole. As our thoughts turn to those who we know are ill or grieving at this time, we take a moment of quiet to hold them before God. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through Him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ.
and a final prayer for ourselves this Easter. God of hills and of valleys. We walk through this shadowy valley with verses half remembered about your rod and your staff and are not fearing. May the memory of your goodness follow us in these days. May your presence with us now provide a constant comfort. And may this darkened valley light up with the dawn of Easter hope. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Please do join us for a service of night prayer today. That will be at 6.30 on the YouTube channel. Also, please do come along to Coffee in the Octagon, virtually, of course, via Zoom, details of which will be at the end of the service. And do have a very happy and hope-filled Easter. And a blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Amen.